appreciate all, you've, all of you uh, attending today's session. Uh, you know, looking at the, the material this morning, I thought, well, you know, uh, folks have already sort of stolen, stolen my thunder, and I actually realized that that's actually not true. It's actually alignment. Um, alignment by default, alignment by essentially customers uh, and ecosystem partners coming to the table with the same types of issues and, uh, and the industry rallying around to, to solve the same problems. So I view that as a, as a very, uh, very important step. So the title of my talk today, uh, Enabling New Pliability in the Modern Data Center. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Baxter, um, head up the, uh, the uh, essentially the data center group uh, at Micron on the DRAM side. So here to talk to, today about, uh, about you know, challenges that CXL resolves, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, what does this market look like? Uh, we've been talking a, a lot about um, you know, CXL when and where and how much uh, in terms of uh, how this, uh, how this you know, potentially impacts positively the market space. And uh, really it boils down to server mix and the, the types of problems that customers and the ecosystem is really willing to solve or really wanting to solve. And uh, we'll start with, uh, with AI servers. Um, it is increasing in terms of the mix of servers that are tackling AI problems uh, by about 2x between you know, roughly today to 2025. And that's important because uh, those systems require roughly seven times the amount of storage and roughly six times the amount of memory. Um, that's all well and good if the systems actually were able to accommodate those kinds of, uh, those, you know, kinds of interesting uh, increases in terms of capability, but uh, frankly, they're not today. Um, CXL really uh, provides uh, the ability for a new interface, a high-performance interface, to enable this kind of expansion to happen. Uh, indeed, uh, we're seeing something on the order of 16% uh, compound annual growth rate in terms of the value of the market when it comes to memory and storage. Uh, in, in the data center space. Um, roughly 180 billion, for those that are way in the back that can't read, 180 billion dollars by calendar year 30. We believe uh, they, th we see a path uh, to on the order of 15 to 20 percent of the, all of memory bits residing behind a CXL interface by the year 2028. That's a significant uh, number because uh, today that's zero. <laughs> It's essentially five years from now, we're seeing a fifth of the market potentially moving this direction. So, uh, so fairly significant and, and seismic, I would say, especially compared to what's, what we've seen over the last 30 to 40 years in terms of architectural differentiation moving forward. When it comes to um, you know, the speed and the quality of, of insight uh, that we get from data, um, Really, it's, it's about that speed. It's about the fact that we want real-time answers. And to us, that means memory. That means DRAM. So we look at uh, kind of the top two uh, segments in this pyramid. And storage just, you know, frankly doesn't cut it. It's not fast enough. It's great to support um, these, these large data sets um, kind of on the sideline. But really, as a, as a working data set for real-time analytics, it needs to be memory. And so today, um, we are essentially, uh, you know, kind of shackled by some of the system limitations that exist, um, whether that be how many HBM, you know, stacks you can fit under a single CPU lid, or, you know, uh, my colleagues, uh, you know, announced the, the, a couple of issues where, you know, you've got only a certain degree of which you can actually apply additional memory channels in a, C in a CPU or in a server. These are existential limitations. <laughs> that are standing basically between us and that large market opportunity that we talked about. <clears throat> so AI use cases like fraud detection, like you know, uh, natural language processing, recommendation engines, it's really what, what people want to do today. And, and the systems today just aren't going to suffice. And this is where CXL comes into play. We believe CXL enables a significant degree of platform pliability that really gets us you know, where we need to be from, from point A to point B to accelerate that, uh, that type of growth that we're, we're you know, is, is on our doorstep. Okay? When it comes to use cases, uh, again, I was, I was happy to hear uh, that, uh, that a lot of these issues have already been discussed, but we'll talk about a few more here um, and maybe go into detail about some of these. Um, dirty little secret about the, uh, about the memory industry, when you have to stack DRAM, it becomes extremely expensive. <laughs> The, uh, the ASP per gigabit becomes nonlinear. 
And so that becomes an issue because uh, you've got a couple of things kind of standing in your way. You've got really significant headwinds when it comes to signal integrity, moving to that next generation speed grade bin. Uh, you can't do it with traditional wire bond stacks anymore. You have to use a TSV-based process, which is both a front-end process as well as a back-end process. That's what drives that nonlinear cost per bit. Um, you know, to the point of the last talk, that low-cost monolithic, that's what that means. We want to get to that sort of linear cost per bit as you scale up. 2x the density is roughly 2x the ASP, not 4x the ASP, for instance. So uh, CXL really starts to uh, alleviate some of this because uh, what you would otherwise use in the, you know, in the absence of CXL is a very expensive TSV-based RDIM. Today, that, that density is 128 gigabyte. Fairly quickly, it's moving to 256, and these workloads demand that kind of footprint. All else being equal, your system uh, costs are going to go through the roof. Uh, today, memory component of the system bill of materials is upwards of 40 to 50 percent, depending on the use case. Imagine that that becomes 70, 80, 90 percent here in the next couple of years. I think CXL really tries to alleviate some of those uh, some of those issues and try to and and serves as a pressure release valve for what otherwise would be ballooning costs for your memory storage uh, subsystems. The middle top here, providing ultra high capacity, we, we uh, discussed this use case as well. This is for uh, you know, use cases like in-memory database that has a large memory footprint, but wants even more. It's the use case of tomorrow that wants you know, that 10 to 15 terabytes worth of memory space, not memory and storage, but memory space for that real-time analytics, that in-memory database. Uh, use case that uh, you know that we all want to want to see. Um, this starts to tap into really interesting um, aspects that today you, you just really can't do with with today's uh, architectures. Even with 8P systems, where you've got eight CPUs, and the only reason you have those eight CPUs is so that you can use the memory footprint of each CPUs for e for you know one particular compute operation. You still can't uh, resolve some of the use cases that are being discussed. So, very interesting you know uh, problem this uh, CXL resolves. Adding memory bandwidth. This is, you know, something that maybe comes as an afterthought when it comes to customer discussions about CXL, but certainly it's, it's very interesting. Our, our, you know, preliminary uh, use case analysis suggests that we get upwards of 30 to 40 percent system uh, performance uh, increases just by adding a couple of CXL devices here. And, of course, you know, the bandwidth scales with the number of devices you add. So, uh, again, it becomes a very interesting solution to a very real problem today. Um, my colleagues uh, said something about uh, increasing core count. It's not just a little bit. It's 25% from a compound annual growth rate. 25% um, more cores per CPU that will ship next year versus this year. That's significant. Um, memory bandwidth and memory capacity doesn't even come close to that to that compound annual growth rate. So we need something like CXL to, to lean on to, to provide that, that pressure release valve. On the bottom left, um, maybe a little bit of a corner case, but this is an interesting one because some customers, they want the leading edge, but they don't necessarily need 10 to 12 memory channels. <laughs> maybe they want six. Maybe that's because you know, they want to limit the number of SKUs that they actually deploy in the field and lean on CXL to provide that memory bandwidth and that memory capacity rather than, you know, extra, you know, four or six or eight memory channels. Um, memory channels are very expensive when it comes to board real estate. And so uh, some, some customers are actually saying, well, let's, let's actually flatten the memory space and lean on CXL as sort of a quote-unquote uh, memory channel. Um, very interesting use case that can solve uh, a lot of issues and save a lot of money. Uh, bottom center here, reducing system complexity. Um, again, this is one of those use cases where, uh, you know, if, if somebody just wants a little bit more bandwidth per core or a little bit more capacity per core, um, you know, in the absence of CXL, you'd have to, you know, essentially add another memory channel or you would have to add another 64 gigabyte RDIM. And you're either overshooting or undershooting a specific target. The hyperscales have these, these targets dialed down to the 10th of a gigabyte per second or the 10th of a gigabyte um, per core. And so um, adding this kind of granularity uh, through CXL is extremely interesting. Again, a, a TCO play. And finally, enablement after 2DPC. Um, this has actually been a, a, a situation that, that, the, that the memory industry has discussed for probably the last decade. 
Um, it, it was going to happen somewhere in the, the middle of DDR4, and now it's going to happen in sort of the middle of, uh, of DDR5. It's actually not if, but when this happens. Um, and when this happens, it's really precipitated by you know, either signal integrity. You can't simply signal as fast as the CPU wants you to signal and still use two DIMMs for a single channel, or power limitations, thermal limitations, beachfront limitations. <laughs> this all comes to a head in this, uh, in this use case. Um, all else being equal, when this happens, you get to a situation of the upper left, um, where your next generation CPU is calling for more capacity, more bandwidth. All else being equal, you have to double the density of your DIMMs, um, which puts you into that TSV category. CXL allows you a path forward without having to do that. So uh, to the point earlier made uh, around TCO savings for the 2DPC, what we call the 2DPC cliff, um, that's a significant uh, you know, event in the, in the industry. And we believe that happens sooner rather than later, probably the 25 timeframe, uh, where, where customers will have to start thinking about uh, how, to, how, to, how to resolve these types of things. So um, in a nutshell, those are some of the use cases we're seeing. There was a lot of discussion around pooling. We're not going to cover that today, but, um, but this is really for type 3 memory-based uh, CXL connected devices. Okay. So the industry is really um, driving a, a new sort of heterogeneous architecture. Um, there were probably prettier pictures <laughs> shown earlier today, but essentially it's the same type of message where the use cases of tomorrow um, are just simply going to require a, a better system, a more pliable system, a more you know, extensible system. And so with CXL, you've got uh, the ability to connect um, in a very high performance way, low latency, high bandwidth, as well as uh, cache coherent, multiple devices to suit your needs. Basically, it's, uh, it allows you to dial up the right combination of compute, the right combination of memory, in the right place at the right time. So, this, this promise of, of um, you know, sort of disaggregation and, uh, and composability, we think, becomes real. Um, now, the software is what glues it all together, so we've got to make sure that uh, we're, we're not taking the eye off the ball um, from that perspective. But this is a, this is a very, you know, I, I think, interesting and, and critical uh, item that, uh, that CXL enables. So what is uh, Micron doing about it? <laughs> we, we are obviously, obviously looking at uh, deploying the full suite of, uh, of memory solutions we have, um, and I purposely, uh, you know, placed LPDDR, GDDR, HBM on this slide for CXL because these are memory technologies that will land in CXL. It's not if, but when. Um, CXL and the disaggregation that that comes with that, or the um, you know the, the the interface that you you basically don't have to be deterministic anymore, allows you to dial in any sort of combination of memory media that that system or that use case really wants. If that's persistence, you can do it. If it's capacity, you can do it. Um, it's, it's really that, uh, that abstracted interface that allows you a lot more flexibility uh, when it comes to memory expansion, bandwidth expansion, or any of those use cases that I, that I previously described. So we're going to bring to bear you know, HBM. We're, we're going to bring to bear D4, D5, obviously. Um, you know, CXL, there will be uh, announcements uh, forthcoming in the near, very near future from, from us re regarding the CXL uh, devices that we'll take to market. And, uh, and SSDs as well. Uh, perhaps not necessarily CXL connected, but, uh, but leveraging, you know, our technology leadership, our 232-layer NAND uh, to drive that TCO play. Let's see. Forward. <laughs> So uh, as discussed, um, it takes a village, right? Uh, we're not out there thinking we can do this in a stovepipe. Um, there are a lot of really interesting innovation uh, you know, happening throughout the ecosystem. And uh, we're on board, and we are partnering with all of you, the ecosystem uh, partners, our customers. Um, and we, we see this uh, you know, uh, to accelerate adoption of CXL, to accelerate the use of really inno innovative uh, technologies, innovative media. That, that would otherwise never be able to be, um, you know, used inside a inside a server today. Um, we th we see, you know, sort of increasing relevancy of of new technologies in the server. This is kind of a a, a breath of fresh air versus what happened what's happened over the last 20 years. And finally, um, you know, increasing the opportunity through standardization. We are all in on the standardization piece. We know that uh, the market and the opportunity for all of us 
um, is better if we're all you know, working as a team uh, in a you know, concerted effort versus in a stovepipe. So in summary, uh, we see a big market opportunity um, for CXL and for, for memory and storage use cases. We certainly um, you know, see uh, some existential platform gaps and issues that are, uh, that are resolved very well by CXL. We think CXL uh, drives uh, this composability um, and, and at the platform level, uh, an ex extreme degree of pliability uh, that's necessary to meet the tomorrow's you know, demands for use cases. And uh, we're all on board for, for standardizing with you all. So thank you very much.